folks. Great day again in London. Uh, I'm doing a quick video and this is going to be very short, I promise you. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is that this is uh, a, basically a remake of a video that I did uh, a couple of years ago because it seems to have got lost on YouTube. And I keep referring to it in my other videos and people are saying, uh, thanks, but where is it? Uh, so that's how I discovered it got lost. So I'm just remaking it. Um, this is, of all the guitar kind of setup tips that I've ever seen, this is one of the most extraordinary tips. Not least because it's completely free, okay? It works only on bolt-on guitars. And all you need is a screwdriver. No other cost at all. And a matter of seconds of your time. Far fewer seconds than it's gonna take you to watch this. If you're worried at all about your guitar not having a lot of spring to it, this is a pretty springy guitar. This is my, by the way, this is my cheap, second-hand Squire Indonesian-made Cabernita Telecaster, 240 pounds, going through my Fender ex Pawn Shop Excelsior amp and a cable. That's it, uh, about 250 pounds. So this whole rig, less than 500 quid. I know I always talk about money and because I've got nice gear, people think I've made money and stuff, but the truth is, you can get some very nice gear on a budget. And this is really nice gear on a budget. So here you are with a bolt-on guitar and a screwdriver. Now you might find that you might feel your guitar is just a bit dull and a bit dead. It doesn't really ring. This this guitar is very ringy, which is why I bought it for a cheap guitar. It's astonishing. But imagine that it was a little more a little more muted, like almost like a palm muting. It's a bit dead, a bit uninteresting, and you've kind of, you've checked your intonation, you've maybe put a new set of strings on, brighten things up a bit, and it's still a bit, a bit dead. And lots of cheap guitars are dead. You know, some of them do go dead. The wood goes a bit spongy and stuff. So, you know, it's well worth a try. All you do, uh, and I'll show you a close-up of this as well, but I'm gonna talk it over in full camera now. You've got a guitar, you put it on your knee, like this, so you can hold onto it firmly on the neck. So you really push against it, and here's your screwdriver. Now these are crosshead Phillips um, screw heads. Find yourself a bit for your screwdriver or a screwdriver that fits the screw nicely, because you're gonna be applying a little bit of pressure. So you don't want a screwdriver bit that flops around in the hole and strips the hole and screws your guitar for later, right? And all you do is this. Your, your neck should be belted on nice and tight, but not over tight. When these things are tightened up by machines, they're very often really tight. That can strip the holes in, in the wood of the neck. If you strip the holes, you're in real trouble. You, you, then you've got to go to somebody who can drill it out, put a bolt anchor in and that. Uh, so don't do it. But assuming your guitar's in good fettle to start with, right? All you do is this. You, so I'm starting with the screw down at the bottom nearest me. Again, I'll do this in close-up. And you undo it, quarter of a turn. So you can feel the screw release from its tightness to a looseness. So now you can move your hand. That's all you do. You're not loosening it any further. And then I do it. I do the diagonally opposite screw next. Same thing. Apply a little pressure, pushing in. So you've got a nice, yeah, and about a quarter of a turn, and you can just feel it loosening. And you, you know it's loose because you can wiggle the screwdriver with the screw in it but you don't want it to be loose like sticking out because remember the strings are under tension here. The guitar's tuned out. I should have said, sorry, you do this when the guitar's tuned up. You don't loosen the strings off. I'll tell you why it works in a minute. I'm then doing the opposite top one and there was a very slight little crunching sound there. You won't have heard it, but very slight little crunching sound. That's important. And again, I'll explain why when I've done it. And finally, the fourth screw, another little tiny crunching sound. On some guitars I've done this with, I've done it on all my bolt-on guitars and all my friends' guitars. It hasn't worked on one. So I don't know how many guitars I've done. I've done all of mine. I must have, I don't know, 20 bolt-on guitars. And uh, plus all my mates' guitars, I must have done 50 guitars and I've done them more than once. So I must have done this 100, 200, 300 times. I don't know. It's a habit now. It's not something I put go out of my way to do. I just do it. Right, so at the moment, all these screws are now very slightly loose. And then all you do is tighten them up. So I'm going to tighten 
the top ones nearest the neck first. Right, I'm gonna tighten that far top one, then the bottom one near me. It doesn't really matter, but it's always good when, you, when you're tightening things up on lids and stuff to do them diagonally. You seem to get a better, nice tight fit. I'm applying some pressure here, but this is just my hands. I'm not, no machine pressure. I'm not gonna strip these holes out. There we are. That's done. Screwdriver goes away. And the guitar's a little bit out of tune now, tiny bit out of tune. And what's happened? Now this thing is back to how it was. I, I should say I cheated. What I did before I started this video is actually undid the screws and I hung the guitar up by, you know, you know, like you do in a, in a, in a cradle like that for about an hour. And then I did the screws up again. So I actually deliberately loosened the neck to exaggerate the point. Right, I'll tell you what this does. When a guitar is put together, it's put together with strings off it, isn't it? Because you can't work on a guitar while the strings are on it. So when the neck and the body are bolted back together, the, the, the downward pressure on the neck into the neck pocket, that pressure is really good. So you do the screws up, string the guitar up, tune it up, happy days. What this does, if you once you've got it tuned up to pitch, you've loosened these, and the, the neck is now under horizontal tension as well, and the neck pulls into the neck pocket, creating a much better contact area between the neck and the body, which makes it ring. This sounds like an acoustic now. It's not, it's not quite in tune, right? But that's it. And as I say, I've done this on dozens of my and others' guitars. I did. I saw this on YouTube. This is not an original idea, uh, but I haven't seen that, that video since. I refer to it all the time, which is why I'm recording this again. Everybody I've shown it to is amazed by it. I've shown it to luthiers, who frankly ought to know better. Some truly didn't. I don't think they were all humouring me and saying, oh, silly old bugger. We knew that years ago. Some of them were genuinely surprised. I know people are using it all the time as a result of what I've introduced them to. I'm not claiming any credit for this. It's just brilliant. It's instantaneous. It's free. All you need is a bolt-on guitar and a screwdriver. That's it. So, quick morning video. Just basically backfilling a video I thought I'd already done and was still up there, but it's been it's been disappeared by YouTube. Um, and do try this for yourselves. It, it, you'll, you'll have to be really clumsy to damage your guitar at all. As long as you don't undo the screws more than that absolute minimum you need to, you surely won't hurt your guitar. Maybe unless you've got a guitar where one of the, or two of the screw holes are already a bit... Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. But apart from that, you can't do any harm. What's to lose? Either it'll do nothing, which it did on one of my guitars, in which case it's okay. Or you'll put it back together, tune it up and go, wow, wow, it's, it's really ringing. And remember, this, this guitar cost me 239 pounds. I'm not showing you with some flash boutique guitar that ought to sound like a million dollars because it cost a million dollars. No, no, cheap, cheap. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, I will um, just tune up properly for a second, courtesy of my cherished TC Polytune. And when I'm tuned up, I'll just play us out. And I hope you find this useful. Um, keep watching. Uh, Bob and Ramon have got, uh, uh, I think, any day now. Let's see what's today. Today is Wednesday. Uh, I think tomorrow night, Thursday night, we're dropping a video about um, uh, Sunburst Les Pauls. Uh, a new replica. So next week we've got a final drop of our amp safari uh, up to Manchester, which is fantastic. And we've kept the two best amps till last. Uh, so that's worth watching. And uh, both uh, Rock Bear, this show, and the Bob and Ramon show, and Ramon's show, the guitar show, we're all going to be posting quite frequently. So please do watch. We, I, I, I love you watching. I mean, you, you, I, my subscriber base has gone up quite a lot in the last couple of months, which I'm just thrilled about. Um, and please keep your comments coming. Uh, however, um, I, I, I obviously prefer the positive ones, but if they're, if they're negative, that's fine too, you know, because I'm here to learn as well. Uh, and I do hope you continue to enjoy it. But for now, I'll just play us out and uh, let's go over a bit of mellow and um, I'll see you next time. Okay, ciao.